and uh, welcome back to How to Game Differently. Today, I have an incredibly special guest with me. I have the absolute legend, David Kay, who you may recognize the voice of for many, many series, such as Megatron in Beast Wars, as well as Armada, Energon. You've been in Megatron for quite some time, to be fair, haven't you? Well, it's just been, it's a, it's been a while, you know, but he's still, it, you know, Where is my rubber ducky? he's still around, you know, <laughs> and I, just, just, still, in case still. I forget, I had my button handy <laughs> oh, and, I, and my toy. I love this. Oh, of toy. course. I oh, yes, a, the masterpiece. Excellent. Yes. I love the toy. Toys are everything. Yeah. Thank I, you I, so much. It's all right. No, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, yeah, to be, I was going to say, I'm a lover of toys. I've got a whole collection behind me. I, I uh, this is a temporary studio until we get the new one built in the new house. But there are some of them in there. Yes. There's some of them over there. Yeah, my old studio had everything all around me. But I do have stuff. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I should actually get that right now just to have it handy. That's my newest, my newest acquisition. The, uh, there's this one here, the, the, the Lego set. There's a good old Erisham right there. And yeah, Mr. Judgment himself. Yes, it is time. Yep. <laughs> I'm Cersei. It is time. Yeah. Which obviously brings up a certain topic. Congratulations, you're in the MCU. Yeah, it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty surreal. Uh, you know, we went to the movies for the first time, and it was two years. And, uh, and, uh, We've moved out of the city, out of L.A. into Ventura County, which is just 50, 40, 50 miles north. To be, uh, we're, we're closer to, um, uh, to Prince Harry now, actually. And, 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 and oh, okay. There, I can point. And that's the direction they are, right? Right, right through there. <laughs> so, You've been around to, uh, have you been around for tea yet? Uh, not yet. Uh, so uh, we're kind of working into the schedule. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, we're kind of between them and Los Angeles. And I, I love it out here. So uh yes that's uh, so my toys um like i said have followed me and so the new movie theater we found is a great theater and we went on a wednesday afternoon yeah. around uh, two o'clock um and there was six people in the entire imax theater and it was wonderful and that smell of popcorn that i walked i didn't order any uh but yeah. that smell of movie theater popcorn i haven't had you just oh my god smell that ah you know is this heaven you know it was one of those <laughs> moments and uh, to to hear to to see that on the screen, and, and t it took me right back to my childhood because I I was I'm a comic book you know uh, kid, and I grew up with my my good buddy David Hayes uh, had this part time job at this old bookstore. It yeah. reminded me of one of those old English bookstores, you know, the, the dusty, creaky stairs and packed. Oh of yeah, I know, yeah. And downstairs. Um, it was a very steep wooden stairway and, and he had this uh, Saturday job, part-time job. He was like 15, 14, 15, I think. And, and he would be in charge of organizing the comics. And there were boxes and boxes of Marvel and DC and, 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 you know, classic comics. Um, the uh, famous monsters of film and magazine, which we get into, but we, we used to sit and read. I used to join him down there and hang out for like hours. And that's where I became a fan of, you know, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee and all those yeah. great artists and stories and characters. And so I'm sitting in the theater with my wife and, and you know, that's, it starts and, and my scene starts and, and um, it's, it took me right back to that bookstore in uh, Peterborough, Canada. Uh, you know, <laughs> it was like, what am I doing? How did this happen? It was uh, it was bizarre, but really very cool. And and uh, and working with Chloe Zhao was just, well, I mean, it was, it was so fun. She's a kid, you know, like we're all kids. We have, <laughs> we use a, like, you know, you you use your imagination. I use a, it's no different. And and yeah, uh, she's just a very well paid kid, uh, but she's uh, an Oscar winning director and. Uh, and and I I I love she has a, there's a very uh, uh, she's very childlike um, in in that sense where she she's I don't know how do you how would you I describe it's like a a, a Mozart or a Beethoven where they, they express see, themselves they, at all yeah, they see they see the entire symphony they hear they see it all in a mm. grand scale um, 
and uh, they play all the parts, you know, uh, and she would ask questions as well when she directs, which I thought was really, really cool. Well, what if this and what if that? Um, and it was just delightful. The whole thing was just uh, delightful to, to, to be a part of, that's for sure. Yeah. So so has it been a bit um, different to the other movies you've done? Because, you know, mm. you've done the, well, one of the other big characters you've done, Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> hey, Hello. It it's me. I have no arms. Well, they, keep fall, they keep falling <laughs> off. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, yeah, and that was cool. I mean, James and I were in a, you know, together a couple of times in recording for the film. Sometimes we we're on our, our own. But um, for this, for live action motion picture, uh, it's, it's daunting. You know, mm. I was up for the challenge. I thought, okay, this is great. They're, you know, they've given me a shot. I want to really you know, nail this. Um, but it's a real collaborative effort. You've got producers and director online, you get a bunch of people, the editors online and yeah, sound guys. So I'm from my studio. We did a three, a, f- a few sessions from my home studio because of the, uh, you know, the pandemic protocols and stuff like that. Yeah, where, of course. And I was, I was, it's just the worst because really, you know, human uh, interaction during movie making and cartoons is tantamount to the, <laughs> the whole thing. But, um, uh, yeah, it was a very cloak and dagger. Uh, <laughs> no one could ever know what was going on. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, I guess a different. Uh, we're all telling stories, so that doesn't change. But it's just the the people, the stakes are a little higher. You know, my um, it becomes a little more elevated, a little more important that I really knock this out of the park and, and do a good job here because... There's a lot of money riding on this. That the money they spend on, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Opposed to you know to making animated films, uh, there's just a higher like you're like okay, all right, so you know yeah, this, yeah. Uh, we're having fun here, but this is I mean, serious <laughs> business. Um, and and it's like with that character, uh, um, you're really walking a tightrope. It's that voiceover tightrope of that 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 tightrope uh, for a character where. He can't get to this one way and can't get to that way, but he is a he is a god. He created these, you know. So you got to be careful with the emotion. So it's pacing and walking that VO tightrope to try not to fall off and get up, you know. Um, and the collaborative effort came from the first session. Then there was some rewrites. The second session, then we you know found where the character was. The third session, we had new, you know, some new stuff, and and we really dialed in the character and and made sure that. Uh, you know, the pacing was good. So it was, uh, yeah, all around collaborative effort. There's many people sort of involved there you know, bringing that to that to life, if that makes yeah. sense. I ramble, so stop me. Um, no, 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 because I, I was going to, like, you, you hit on the head of what I was going to say, like, you had to hold back so much emotion for the character because you can't, because you have to sound menacing because you're this, like you say, massive god. Yeah. But you can't say, like, make him too much like he's angry. No, uh, yeah. you, it's a, it, and when he is, it's a real little on the dial. So it's a, you know, a little little switch, um, and mm. also uh, realizing what they're going to do with your voice as far as. So you have to understand like where the voice it can't be too low, um, where it's on you can't understand it. So we got to sort of pick an area. I kind of I kind of went with the uh, the Michael Fassbender um, Prometheus type. Uh, character. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah we yeah. brought a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of my British heritage in there, and 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 so that's where we kind of landed uh, with the tonality of it. Um, and, and I always had sort of had uh, that fast bender, you know, so that Prometheus thing in the back of my head while I was kind of, you know, going through this because it sort of helped with the, uh, you know, with the pacing and stuff like that. I guess. Yeah, yeah, and hate that certain tones and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, so again, having to do that from home is quite a struggle because I know from like previous interviews, especially like around Beast Wars time, mm-hmm. you yeah. you like pretty much all you guys really enjoyed it because you were like oh. goofing around and that's you know. the best that's the best part of it. Yeah, you know, there's a new show that I can't uh, talk too much of. I can't talk about it at all. It hasn't, been, but it's it's a comedy and and it's animated okay. and and you know, we're all, we're in tears and we're in our home studios in our pajamas and everybody's in zoom. And we're like, we're like, yeah, you know, we're laughing. <laughs> uh, and so being in there and, and, you know, you do table reads, we were doing table reads, 
but there were people online like you know they call them laughers or whatever and it's just so different to being it would be so nice to be in a room with people and, and have that you know that connection and hear the laughter coming from over there and you know that's where the fun is right that's we had so much fun with the you know gary and and, and scotty and everybody doing these characters uh yeah. throwing spit balls and taking you know taking pens and trying to stick them in the top of the uh, pinewood studios you yeah. know sling i mean it, it was so really and sue blue would have to say guys okay guys come on, okay settle down set, okay come on it's like corralling a bunch of kindergarten children that's great really, really <laughs> uh, and, and that's the fun of it and, and yeah uh, and Avengers Assemble was this when I was doing a uh, vision and, and Jarvis. It was the same thing. We had such a fun time. Roger Craig Smith, Bumper Robinson. Um, mm. Oh my God. Uh, uh, <laughs> so many, so many people. So many. And the laughs, the, it, it's such a good time. And that creates an energy in the room. Right. And I think yeah. it's so important. So you really have to, we ju- and we just, of course, uh, Masters uh, of the uh, Universe, uh, Motu, is, is dropped. Um, and, uh, we all did that. We started of course, in, you know, in studio and then we all went, went home, but I think that turned out fantastic the way, because we had a relationship to begin with in the studio. Um, and that's one of those things where you gotta, you gotta bring it all, but it's from this, from here, you have to, it, it's a bit of a, well, that's, that's, I guess we're, why we're called actors, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But you have to bring, you have to bring, you have the emotion and have all that and bring it from your pajamas, in your pajamas, in your own studio. Um, yeah, well, you have to be comfortable sometimes to do it. Yeah, and sometimes sure. you have to be incom- uncomfortable, you know, depending yeah, on scenario. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, yeah, there it is. I, I, I ache for the, for the day we can, you know, get back to doing the regular way, even though it yeah. is kind of nice to, you know, crawl out of bed and do a McDonald's session in the morning and then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> roll back into bed if you if need be uh, but yeah there it is that's good and um to be fair you just like hit on something there so you know you've had a very busy year now being mm-hmm. battle cat in the new he-man series and netflix it's battle cat kind of a cross between liam now the actor's name in uh, uh game of thrones uh liam he was uh you know remember the the, the red the red the red uh, queen the red witch uh, oh god yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, his 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 number one, you know, mm. I don't think it's a good idea for her. Just, you know, and I kind of crossed him between Liam Neeson and, and, and that character. And I came up with this, you know, the, the battle cat. Um, and that's where that voice is. It lands. And, and I uh, thought he's, he's very wise. And, and I, I loved, uh, I just loved that cast and, and Yuri uh, Lowenthal is, is he man and, and the entire cast and, and uh, was, was great. And that character was fun to do. It was very comfortable. Mm. I, I slipped into those uh, those shoes. Uh, it, it just I kind of landed. You know what I mean? Some characters took me a while, take me a while to kind of just get comfortable, like Optimus yeah, Prime yeah, yeah. T, T, uh, in the animated series, where it took me a bit just to get comfortable because I'm like I'm used to you know you're this guy and doing Shakespeare. I was going to say you you you're usually yeah. the villain. What, why have you become you know, this hero? Yeah, and so you have to sort of you know dial it back, and and it took me a while. But some characters you kind of just drop in, and they feel they feel right. Other characters takes a bit of work. So, does that make yeah. any sense? No, 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 no definitely. Yeah. Cause it's like, um, it's like it with anything, isn't it? It's like a book sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it yeah. takes a little while to get into. Sometimes you just slip straight into it. You know? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Same no, thing. Definitely. Same. Definitely. Um, so, I was actually going to ask you about the whole um, being Optimus Prime in the Transformers animated series. So, from memory, you actually went in wanting to be Megatron. And the well, I, office- I, I expected was one, I, I expected to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course they're gonna. Here we go again. Yes, but, uh, <laughs> go ahead. yes. Sorry, I interrupted there. No, no, no. So obviously you took on the. Uh, oh, here he is. Yeah, there's one of them. The big one's back in there. It's got dust on it. Uh, <laughs> right. Sorry, but yes. <laughs> No, I was going to say, like, um, so when they get back to you of like, well, we, we, we think you'd be a good Optimus Prime. W- what was the first thing that came to your mind of like, oh, right, okay, so I'm going to be Optimus now. Been Megatron for like nearly six or seven years and now yeah. jumping ship. Yeah, it's, it was strange because I found out they were, do- I was still living in, in Canada at the time in Vancouver. 
Um, mm. And I was commuting back and forth uh, fairly often to LA and, and it would, it would just over the years get busier until I had to just emigrate here and stay here. Um, but that was a time around 2006, I guess it was uh, five. Well, we did it, oh, six um, with the having the auditions. And, and I emailed, uh, I think we had emailed back then. I think we did. <laughs> I emailed Sue Blue. I said, Hey, Sue, I hear, uh, you know, is there any chance that I'd love to be able to read you? Oh, honey. Oh, my God, honey. Yeah. We, why not? Allow that? I said, Yeah, because I can, I can work if I, I'm legally allowed to work in the US and I could for a while now. And she said, Oh, my God. Yeah. So they had me read and I'd fly, flew down and, um, and they, I, I made the callbacks and with the Cartoon Network and there Sue was and, and Matt Youngberg. They're all in there in the room. And it was it was great. It was it felt kind of comfortable, you know, to be there because uh, yeah. the Transformers franchise, I was used to the Transformers franchise. And of course, I had Megatron. I had Lugnut. I, I read for Lugnut. Um, and he was, you know, just a stupid robot. It was fun, kind of fun to do him. That Megatron is wise. I will do anything you say, sir. You know, ah! Whatever. And then. Yeah. I did the Megatron thing. I did a couple other characters. And then um, and Sue comes in. Hey, listen, uh, DK, uh, we want you to pick up um, and take a look at Optimus. We're, we, you know, having a tough time trying to find Optimus. And he's kind of a Tom Hanks character. So go out in the hall and, and look at the sides. I'm thinking, well, that's kind of weird. OK, I'll take, mm. uh, I'll take a look at it. And I came back in and, and read and sort of did my own voice. And I, I made a little younger and a little more naive i suppose i wasn't quite sure and and, and i could see the heads kind of doing this behind the glass and they're talking i'm going well that's this is kind of weird all right you know i'll play and yeah. then i said well listen thanks a lot I, I, awesome yeah great to see you blah blah blah, blah. and the niceties and i took off and it was a it was a couple uh, how many weeks later i was uh back then i was driving through chinatown uh mm. in la and heading toward to play squash um, which is a random sport that I put down at the uh, Los Angeles Athle Athletic Club. And I was heading through Chinatown. That's how you kind of get down there through. And the phone rings and it's my agent, my animation agent, Natanya. And, and she says, hey, DK, so it's so good news. I go, oh, great. So uh, they want to you know, hire you for um, for the new Transformers series. I go, all right, Megatron rides again. You know, it's going to be, that's what I'm, I'm thinking in my head. This is going to be yeah, fun. Yeah. Awesome. And so, they, yeah, they want to book you for the role of Optimus. And she started talking about other, you know, scheduling. And, and I kind of, I said, so hang on a sec. So, so you said, you said Optimus or was it Megatron? I said, no, no, they want to hire you for the role of, of Optimus. And <laughs> like, I almost drove off the road. Um, all I could think of is driving to Chinatown at that point is the old movie. What's the Jack Nicholson with this Chinatown, Jack, forget about it. Um, and yeah, I I, 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 and I said, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a mistake. <laughs> yeah, are, you, are you are you sure? The, uh, I'm just making sure I hear. So I was auto automatically kind of nervous. I'm thinking, well, now what am I going to do with this? Because I really, with Megatron, I knew I knew sort of where you know this is a whole new thing. Well, it, well, first I thought, well, is this going to be? What am I going to do? How am I going to? Uh, but I'm just so thrilled to be a part of it. And then the, the first day we got in there, you don't really know, you're not, you can't say anything. And then you see all who, who's in the room and like, what a, what a cast that was. Um, you know, Tom, Tom Kenny was there and, and, uh, geez, I mean, uh, Bill Fagerbecki and, and, uh, and Bumper was, it was, uh, was in that one and, and uh, Tara Strong, um, and uh, uh, Corey Burton, of course, is Megatron and Corey, Corey <laughs> was a delight. Him and I stood beside each other. Yeah. And the other cool thing about that series is so many guest stars because you're you're doing it in as my first real series in 2007. I was do I, I was doing in in Los Angeles in in Hollywood, and um, so they would bring in people like Weird Al would be there in the morning. And I go, oh hey Weird, I mean Al, I mean huh? it was, and um, all these different uh, you know some comedians and some some pretty big stars as as guest roles, and it was really fun. Yeah. Uh, to do did, did, did you to, manage to um, meet some of your heroes through that series or any series at all oh gosh if fred willard was in the one day and, and um oh, and yeah. he passed last year and he's a, a legend um i'm, I'm forgetting a, a one name uh that uh, was pretty cool he was an alien um what's his name every time he talked a whole room would would vibrate you know <laughs> I was standing oh. beside him what was yeah. his Damn it, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, and uh, I just kept saying, keep talking, because I'm getting a back massage right here. Just at the whole 
balls. <laughs> just the vibration from it. What's his name? Damn it, I forget. I'll, I'll remember his name hopefully before the interview is over. But yeah, he's a, a weird Al Yankovic. I mean, you know, I mean, you walk in and there's there he is sitting there. Hey man, hey, how's it going? You know, I go, hey, I don't know what I didn't know what to call him. Um, I don't think I called him weird. I think I just call because you. What do you call him? Weird Al or Hey Weird? Hey Al or what? I, I, I'm I was, even I think what his actual name is. <laughs> yeah, uh, who knows? And then the cool thing is the life's greatest mysteries. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And then we were in a botcon in Pasadena, and him and I were on a panel together, um, which was surreal. So yeah, that was pretty awesome for <laughs> for a kid from a little small little town in Canada, you know, doing uh, doing this stuff. That's pretty neat. That's cool. But yeah, it took, it, like I said before, it took it took about five episodes to get comfortable with with Optimus, and yeah. uh, and then it kind of, kind of dialed him in. You know, transform rollout just became my more my voice. It kind of dropped into it. You know. Yeah, yeah and I was going to say like it all worked well, and you picked up a good point of like um, when you first started it, it was like he was a rookie, yeah, you because know, this is like a bit of slightly an origin story in a way yes. for Optimus Prime becoming yeah. a leader and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, yeah and just having that kind of different side to him was really good. And again, like you, you, you brought that easily to that character. Oh, thank you. And thank you. Um, I was going to say, like, did you like phone up Gary Clark and just go to him, like? By the way, I'm Optimus. I know I'm going to be stepping on your shoes. A oh no, bit, but... no, no, <laughs> not at all. Um, I, I, the only person I've ever done that to, because uh, I felt he's, he's uh, look, I, I, you know, everybody, it's, it's, it's the nature of the business, you know. Like I'm not going to be doing mm. the character forever, as we all know. Um, uh, the fact that we get to inhabit these characters, um, I think Rob Paulson talked about this. The, the fact that we get to even inhabit these characters for a moment in time is an honor. Yeah. It's mm. the fact that, you know, I was able to have this character. What, how, how great is that? What a treat. You know, is it going to go on forever? Who knows? We all love it too. And sometimes the characters do like Clank. I mean, he's coming up on, well, it'll be pushing 20 years in the next uh, couple yeah. of years. So, yeah. Uh, so you, you just don't know. Like I said, at the be- uh, we talked at the beginning about when you read something or read for a, a character or show, it could be a short lived thing or it could be going on forever. I didn't realize how large the franchise was until I went to my first, transformers convention in in rochester new york and the all the people that were there um yeah i didn't realize how how big it was i I had no idea but the one person i did tell when i I was cast as grandpa max in the new uh, ben 10 series you know oh yeah uh, come on ben it's just basically my uncle now stop screwing around and get over here is that's (laughs) that's who i became yeah Uh, and uh, i i did i see i saw paul Paul Eiding in a, in a read an audition for something, and I, I said, I, I, I just kind of felt like an idiot, but I, I said, listen, man, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Paul is such a gem of a human. Like, he's just one of the nicest people you'd ever ever meet, gentle soul, and mm. so good, and, and amazing. And so I, I, for whatever, I felt I needed to say something, because everybody yeah. finds out. I get, because it's not up to me it's not, you know, we all read for stuff, they all, whatever the new, uh, the producers are people doing the show they have their own ideas and they, they want to make their mark and and uh, that's just the nature of the business but i did uh sort of apologize to paul <laughs> it was one, <laughs> as i just said oh yeah sorry man i uh, uh, but that's that's the deal you know that's that show business i suppose um and you know people with characters i do but people are doing them and and, and other people. it's nothing to do with the you know, sure, we'd all love to do them, but that's just the, that's the business. You know? Yeah, definitely. But at least it gives you opportunity to do more voices for different characters. And well, stuff yeah, like of that. course. You never know what's around the bend, and that's the beauty of it. I I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, uh, or what's going to come down the? Uh, is it the pike or the pipe? What is what it's coming? Pipe, isn't it? Is it the pipe? What's the pike? Is that like a? It's a fish in, in Canada, but, but I mean, is isn't it like a? I don't know. I never know. Maybe some. Maybe maybe somebody knows. I thought it was what always down the down pipeline. The, down the pipe, right? The pipe. Yeah, yeah it's down. Yeah, down the pike. I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old Irish thing. Down the pike. Hey, hey. I don't I have no idea. Pike, yeah. pike sometimes means something else over in the UK, but we won't go into that. No, no. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so, um, just going on um, regarding Clank. For instance, mm-hmm. so you, like I say, you've got coming up to about twenty years now. Now, 
you know, uh, was it a uh, rift between? Is it rift, rift between apart. time? The latest one, yeah. Rift apart, yeah. yeah. Oh, rift apart. That's the one. That's the one. You know, like probably one of the biggest game releases this year. Yes. Have you played it? No, because I don't have a PS5. My son has one. I don't know how he got one, but he's uh, living on his sure, own. So I, was, I didn't get it from. <laughs> no, I'm like, how did you get one? Well, I got a well. well yeah, no, I don't. I I don't even know if I have a. I don't even know if I have a copy of the game. I'm not even sure. Come to come to think of it, I don't have it. All I have is Clank with no arms. That's that's all I have. Oh, and the big poster in the back. We must uh, we must phone Insomniac. Hello, I'd like to speak to Ted Price. It's Clank. Tell him it's urgent. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to playing it. And we were in the middle of a move when it when it came out. So this, yeah. you know, how stressful that all is. So. I, I said, okay, you know what? I'm not going to play this until I'm all set up and I can sit down and I get the. I want the. I want the the full experience. I want the the the, the headpiece, uh, whatever oh, yeah. they keep calling it these days, the VR. And I want to be immersed and I want to. I want to go in. I want to play the game, and I will. I just have not got around to it yet. Yeah. Uh, I've seen scenes and bits. Uh, we were on a big Zoom the day it uh, dropped with all the writers and Ted Price's on to a little speech. I wish we were all in person, but it was, of course, you know, we couldn't. And uh, the one of the coolest things about that day and when the game dropped was one of the head writers I was working with a lot. She was on the on the team. We always had a bunch of people on Zoom and the director, uh, Chris yeah. Zimmerman and, and, and the writers and stuff. And and she said she got emotional and she said, you know, I just want to tell you that I played my first Ratchet and Clank game when I was in second grade. And here I am, the head writer um, on one of the biggest games. She just it, 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 she, I just, I'm overwhelmed. I just I can't believe, you know, this is where we are. And I've I'm I've I'm one of the head writers on the game. And I was a child when I played the first one. So that yeah. was really cool. And, and I heard a lot of similar stories like that. It's it is a heck of a team. It's a heck of a place to to work over there i understand now why you know it, there's so many people want to in, intern and how they're o overwhelmed with requests because why i was in there uh, in insomniac and in, in the building uh, a number of years ago before the pandemic i was in there you know fairly often i drop by and yeah and some sessions are hanging out and there's actually real weapons like they have like in the case when you come in the front door oh, that's cool and like oh look at that <laughs> you're like a kid yeah. and and one of the coolest things i thought it, it was funny. The first thing I thought how cool it was wasn't about all the the neat you know drawing things and all the things they were doing and rendering and the computer animation they were working on. It was the room where they had all the different kinds of cereal in it. <laughs> okay, it was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to work here? Because you could have like all you had any kind of breakfast cereal in this. It had all kinds of snacks. Like, oh, man, you could because they were all sometimes working under deadlines and then have to stay there yeah, yeah. And I, all i thought was wow look at all the different kinds of breakfast cereal so <laughs> <laughs> where my mind was i'm not one of those smart kids out there working on the game i'm more interested in breakfast cereal that's fantastic <laughs> and it was the same by the way uh idea at pixar up and um when i worked on a um the movie up it, yes put me up there and they also all the, the, the campus is amazing, but the room that blew me away was the, guess what? The breakfast cereal room. They had every kind, even more breakfast cereal at Pixar. They had everything. And they had Danishes. They had a, whatever you wanted. And it was sort of, <laughs> well, if I wasn't doing voiceover, I just want to work for one of these companies so I can have my, my pick of breakfast cereals. I, I think it's all, I think there are like a lot of companies like that. It's like uh, with like Google and all that kind of stuff. They want to oh. do everything that's possible to help your creativity, you know. But you, you know, yeah, but really they don't want you to go home. That's the deal. Yeah, that's you stay there and and work. <laughs> yeah, that's why there's like hammocks everywhere. So you could go uh -huh. there, have a kip, you know, and then yeah. get back up and that's it. That's right. Yeah, that was, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> The work environment has changed over the years, let me tell you. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's changed even more now, hasn't it? <laughs> Is it ever? Yeah. Yeah, it's very true. Um, so so obviously you've done a few other video games as well, you know, like uh, recently Cycle Noughts 2. Yeah. You know. Uh, Honey what? pepper ball bacon for color. That's the one. That's, That's right. right. I, I used to get sore neck when I did his uh, his voice because it kind of uh, you know that southern uh, he, and it, I would scrunch my neck and and uh, 
Yeah, I love that character too. Jack Black is in the newest one, and that's quite a game. Yeah. I'd love to play that one as well. That's on the Xbox platform. Uh, and Chris Brown, uh, the voice director, she, I just, I love her. I, I, I work with her on anything. Um, she's so delightful and so much fun. And uh, you, you could do a horrible session and she's so oh my god that was so good oh yeah <laughs> you feel like oh it was horrible but thank you <laughs> uh, but Carla, he was i like him it, it was kind of fun to do you know uh i yeah man it's it's let me tell you one thing is the fact that i, I look back in some of these characters and the fact that they gave me a chance and they actually hired me still blows me away it's still we even when i was cast and i got the news from my agent about erishem and about uh uh you know i couldn't talk about it for quite a long time i honestly like i said from the like i did from the car for optimus are you sure is it they want me okay yeah. you always kind of wonder like well how did that all all happen uh i think really the most important thing is to have find something you love to do I think find something you really love to do and you can't wait to, to get going on Monday again. Um, it, I think that's a secret to, to whatever, whether it's voiceover or whether you're a winemaker or you're a mechanic, find something you just, you're passionate about. I have an electrician that comes here once in a while and does some stuff around the house and he loves it. He yeah. loves, loves what he does. He said, you know, he's like a jet. He's, I call him the Jedi. And uh, he was here this morning and a smile on his face, you know, I mean, find something you love. But they say, like, if you enjoy your work, you never work a day in your life. That's the point. My mother told, tells me, I, I used to think, Mom, my friends are reads. So how was the get together? We, when I went back to my hometown a couple of years ago, we had a yeah. bit of a small reunion with some high school friends. And, and I mean, the most of them are retired. And well, what? Well, I'm a teacher. I go, oh, so you're retired. And oh, I was in, you know, uh, so and so. And I, and so I said, well, yeah, they're and I was kind of depressed. And she said, well, you never started working. I go, yeah, you're right. Yeah, good point. Because <laughs> I, I didn't, doesn't feel, you know, the, I, I can do this, you know, till, till the end days. Um, keep right on do, doing stuff in front of the microphone. It's, it doesn't feel like work to me. It just feels like fun. And, and as Rob Paulson pointed out once in a conversation a while ago, you know, can you believe this, DK? Like, you know, we get paid for this. I mean, you know, come on. That's crazy. And it's true. Yeah. Like a check shows up and you go, oh, shit. Okay. I, I didn't, <laughs> it, it's like, I'm surprised that they're actually going to give me money for this. I'm glad yeah. they do. But that's that's how it should be. People shouldn't get into a business or especially voiceover acting to, to just because I want a nice car. I wanted this and I wanted that. It takes a long time, blood, sweat, and tears. But you can't get into it just because I want to make you know, some scratch, yeah, some money. Yeah, yeah. You, you gotta just love it every day. You gotta love it. Uh, that's, say, like, that's, that's where for, the pay for, comes. I was gonna say for like for me, I like voice acting would be an absolute dream job for me. It's like incredible. Because like you say, you like you get thrown a character, and it's like, like how am I going to? tackle this guy or woman or whatever it may be you know yeah. like, is it going to be a high pitch a low pitch you know is it going to be an aggressive person or calm person and um that, that so that was going to lead into a question like so for anyone out there like who wants to get into voice acting what's like your top tips on how to start off well you uh you you hit a nail on the head there with all those 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 traits and things you you know you want to do or create a character but the most important important thing is whatever you do this character has to have is a living breathing being whether right. he is a a clank a robot he has to there's a a processor in there that, that you know that involves feelings whether you're doing a megatron or an optimus or or any of these characters a vision they all have they're a they're a they're a, a, a i don't know if that does vision breathe i think mean, he's, he's a symbiont but I don't know. I'm not sure if I breathe or not. Not sure. Paul Bettany. There we are. Vision. Um, <laughs> incoming, sir. Uh, anyway, uh, they, they're living beings. They're, they exist. They have a soul. They have a heart. Mm. Um, and, and that's the most important thing is whoever you're playing is, has a soul. Or right. something, a robotic soul. They have a soul. They have, they have, things they've done before this character and things they will do after they have hopes and dreams are no different than you and I, you have to 
those are the nuances I call of creating a character. And, 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 and that's a big deal with Arishem is the nuance. I forgot mm. to mention that word of, of the nuance of him being a little upset or being, yeah. you know, it's the nuance and that's where it comes from. It's really important that they're, they're, it's an element of who you are as a person that's being thrown into this character and you're living and breathing. And, but this character has to live and breathe on its own. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, no, no, definitely. That, yeah, that's, like that's where, that's where you get in a room full of pros. Uh, you kind of, wow. Okay. This is, they're all, they're all real people. They're all real beings, you mm -hmm. know, um, you know, talking to tiger has to have a soul. He has to be caring. He has to, you know, he has to do things for He Man, and he has a, a relationship with this boy to keep him safe. And and mm -hmm. that you kind of have to. I almost envision when I'm standing in front of the microphone is there's a world, and it's sort of there's a a dome, and 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 I live in this dome. This character's in this dome, and I, and this is my my life. You know, uh, once we step step out and we go about our day, you know, we have our our large dome <laughs> but when you're doing a character he's his world is right here uh, in this microphone and um yeah that and that's the fun of it that's like i said that that's the chase we talked uh, earlier before uh the interview oh, about Gordon, yeah. i'm one of those um people that um i'll say this here on your show uh thank you that uh, i have i don't know if i've seen an actual full episode from beginning to end of beast wars there i've said it uh one of it's the out reasons there, folks it's out there <laughs> or, I, i've actually i've watched uh five motus because i think they're uh, like wow this is great this is i wasn't quite sure because i'm always i, I don't want to be disappointed I, I know i could have done better i know it's a silly thing it's just my thing and i, and I have watched mm. you know, i've watched the movie up uh, you know a number of times but um but as a character and it yeah, for me, it's kind of tough because for me, it's about the chase and about doing it and about uh, and, uh, what, what did I say before? It, yeah, about, it was about the excitement and the adrenaline yeah, the, rush. It's of, about the hunt, it. you know, yeah. the hunt for the character and then you're doing it and then being it. And then by the time it becomes like a show and it's on a screen somewhere, you're like, oh, that's that's like four years ago. You know, mm -hmm. I, I always like to be in the moment all the time. So I'm weird like that. Yeah. You know, Oh, I, I wouldn't say that it was weird because like yeah. I, I I know a lot of people like that, and it's even with like myself with uh, like with the job I do uh, out of this. Like, well, this is a hobby, <laughs> if anything. But um, you know, it is the excitement of okay, so something's come up, a challenge has appeared. You know, you need to figure it out and get on with it and all that kind of stuff, and then everything else just happens around it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's true. Um, so I I enjoy the doing. Uh, the end product is, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> is awesome. And, and, and that's where, you know, the other talents, the other mega talents that we don't forget, we don't forget there's the, the writers and, and oh, yeah. animators and background. I mean, those folks are, to me, those are like, oh my God, how do you do that? How do you write that? How do you make, how do you make it look like that? I mean, we do our part. Yeah. But we forget about those folks a lot of the times who deserve an immense amount of credit for what mm. they do. Like uh, I'm, I'm playing uh, Vandal Savage on um, uh, it just the episode I'm in drop. I can talk about it finally after uh, 17 years. Hey, there we go. Um, but Vandal Savage is, you know, um, and it, the the artists and the people who draw and create the stories. Greg Wiseman. I mean, these. The talent there is is nuts, and so don't forget about those folks. <laughs> mm. Oh, no, definitely. And yeah. um, a, a little bit off topic, I just want to shout out someone, uh, Josh, yeah. who is the artist for the Beast Wars comic book series. The oh, brand new yes. one that came out. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I've messaged him a couple of times on Twitter. He's uh, he, he's a really really nice guy, really nice guy. And he's obviously a massive fan of yourself, you know. Uh, because, that was like, so so cool to to do that yeah yeah read yeah. Re we read one of the first the first i uh, read a few scenes or something from the first comic i love that yeah yeah, yeah. it's an awesome incredible 
Yeah, and it, a lot of these inspiration is also from animated, as in like Transformers animated. Yeah. So like, it's a lovely bundle of like your like yep. impact as well onto it as well. I agree. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be leaving a link to his uh, Twitch channel down below because he's been That's doing sweet. a he's been drawing all the different characters as if they're at a American high school. So right. like, <laughs> so like, Upsons Prime's a jock. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, of course. You know, and there's like all, all sorts of things. Really cool, really cool. So go go awesome. check him out. I will. Um, so w- one of the things I was really interested to know is, so you've done like American TV cartoons, you've been you've done movies, but you've also done dubbing for anime as well. Yep. What 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 do you um, do? You feel there's like a lot of difference between it. Like, do you have to adapt a lot to these things or does it is is it all pretty much like okay here's a script let me bring, bring this character well, to life it's uh again there's a lot of nuance in that too it's a different set of uh, skills to go in it's like you know learning how to ride a bike because a lot of times you're getting you know bits of the story at a time uh, like yeah. for doing sashomaru and uh shut up jogan that's enough, Jockin. Jockin, shut up. Um, and in uh, with y- Yashihime, which is on now, which is wonderful, and the fact that they brought back to some of the OG cast and uh, mm. and the new cast, which is which is which is great. Um, working with uh, I haven't seen Richard uh, for many many years, but he's up in Vancouver, and to, and to be in the same show again as is him is kind of neat. But yeah, it's, it's following the lip flaps, you know. There's, there's yeah. some people have to do the translation and trying to get the translation correct. Uh, sometimes is annoying. Um, I must admit, you know, when I watched the Squid Game, I watched it subtitles. I, I can't, I couldn't hear, I couldn't listen to the the English dub. The yeah. It drove me nuts. It's like, oh. Um, so I try not to. I try to be as real as I can with them in the moment with those lip flaps. Uh, and it is, and we have great voice directors on that show, Yashihime, and, and, and trying to be very, uh, keep, keep the character, but yeah, it's like, it is nuance. And, and sometimes it's just not enough time to get what you really want to do in there because the animation is already drawn. Yeah. Um, it is, it is kind of fun. It's a, like I said, uh, the thrill of the hunt. I love yeah. to do it. And yeah, um, it is. It, it's so like for when we did uh, the uh, Transformers series, um, Armada, it was already yeah. drawn. So instead of me having to sit there and take my time with a scene like um, like a Shakespearean moment, my name is Megatron. I am Alpha Omega, and I could you know do the whole thing in the speech. Yeah. Well, you, you don't have that time. You have a certain amount of time before the lips stop closing. Yeah. So uh, I couldn't do a lot of the nuance I would love to have done. Uh, I still enjoy all of it, uh, but I do love, I do love the prelay because you can take your time a little bit if if they if you have time to kind of suss out the character. Uh, but again, uh, anime is a, it's a skill, and uh, props to everybody who 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 does it because it's you know it's not easy trying to bring that realism into that little moment. Yeah. So do you usually watch the um, the episode previously with the previous voice acting? Uh, from you know over Japan and that do you do you watch that to kind of get the feel of that character like how they've done it or do you just go straight in like right this is how I think the character should sound they uh it's a good question uh what happens is that before each scene uh they will mm-hmm. play the Japanese okay so you sort of have an intent you sort of see the scene you see what's going on and, and they will explain it if, if, if you're not familiar with the uh uh, with, with the scene or, the, or what's going on before or after they, the director will explain, okay, this is what's happening. Uh, we're going to play the Japanese down. So you get the idea. And then we'll, you know, we'll go in and then beep, beep, beep. And they're all watch the screen. There's no beeps anymore, but I'll watch the screen. And then as soon as uh, it's my turn, I'll, I'll, I can watch it on this, on the computer screen here yeah. and record it, you know, at, at, at home and follow the lip flaps. But yeah, you do, they do play the Japanese beforehand. Uh, so you oh, see. But sometimes it's quite different, you know. Sometimes it's you know, you know, and then yeah, that's not what I would do. So <laughs> I wouldn't do that. So you adapt it to your character and to how you know you're doing it. Um, yeah. Okay. 
So I've um, I've watched quite a lot of your uh, behind the mic series on YouTube. Oh, I got to do another one of those, don't I? Soon. Yes. Well, it has been. Yeah, I think it's been about six months since the last one. It has. Gosh. Okay, yes. I've got a couple. Actually, I've got a couple trailers. Because I, I thanks for reminding me. I will do that. Yeah, that's all right. Um, yeah. So obviously, like you've been doing a lot of trailers for like baseball, American football. You've been doing like tours for like uh, Adele was one of the, one of the big ones. You know, yeah, a, yeah. a few years back and stuff. Adele. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so what what I was curious about was like for watching the videos, you've got like. The setup you have now where you got your mic in front of you you got these big screens but i noticed you had like a dial or something on the oh, side yeah. like, what, that's, what's that that's radio that's a habit okay. that's an old habit i picked the only reason and my engineer uh george whittem who looks after my studio and comes out and does the thing actually this one's starting to get a little squeaky so it's time for him to come out again and uh the, um and if you can see that uh you know the camera down uh down there it, it's it's a oh, okay the dial it's it's yeah. an old this is an old bake light like this is a specially made thing that he found and put this on now when i used to be in radio many years ago and on the mm -hmm. air um they had these big dials and so i used to have my headphones so i always have one off so i can hear what i'm really sounding like i, I okay. you know put two on you start listening to yourself hey listen to that wow that's that's that sounds fantastic but <laughs> But a lot of times in animation and cartoons, we don't use headphones at all because oh, okay. we're having a conversation. Uh, mm. But I like to hear, I like to hear sometimes the character here, and then have an open ear, so I I have a, a sense of reality of what's really sounding like. And um, in radio, they had these big the pots they call them. I don't know what why they call them pots, but they're big dials, and so the music would come on, and the music would be loud. And the headphones and so you have the turned up loud um you know phil collins would come on uh 75 degrees here's phil collins you know and i turn it up and down and because so, yeah. so i wouldn't wouldn't get the feedback in the in the microphone like if i had it too loud you know you get sort of like that that that's sort oh, of yeah thing. yeah so in order to avoid that i would turn it down and okay. with certain characters and certain things i'm doing i kind of want to hear that in my left ear and I want to hear the reality in my right. Mm -hmm. I just I'm, I'm I'm conscious of the feedback, so it became a habit. So I sometimes use it, I sometimes don't. But when I have this on, um, the, I don't know. There's certain like again, I'm going to words, use the word nuance again that I want to hear, and so I'll turn it up and then turn it back down so I don't get the feedback. But my if my head goes this way, it's just really basically a habit that annoys the crap out of my engineer because I, I go through these i go through these dials and knobs and equipment a lot and he yeah. has to find them you know and bake light uh old bake light knobs are becoming uh, hard to find <laughs> oh really <laughs> well you know the old it's old school and i just like i like to have that whatever that is <laughs> you know <laughs> turn it yeah it's it's weird it's just it's a it's a thing it's my yeah. thing no, I was just curious, like, like I said, because of the movement. Like, it, uh, at first, I thought you were doing like part time DJing with the, like, the one yeah. ear. <laughs> Go, do, do, yeah. do. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, so with all these like different voices that you've picked up on over the years, were they ones that when you saw a character you're like okay i'm gonna try this one or had it been like a voice that you messed around with when you were like potentially when you were younger because for me like like i said i'd love to get into voice acting and i sometimes make some absolutely bizarre voices and you know <laughs> since, since i've been a dad when i read a story to my kid yeah. i always try and bring like really random characters uh, with voices and she like she'd mm -hmm. be giggling like crazy and stuff yeah. so I, like, like I said, I wasn't sure if, like, say, for instance, like Clank, was it that when you were younger, you may have been like playing with a toy and you like were talking in that voice for that character, and you just made that voice for the character? Uh, no, Clank was uh, sort of a. Uh, when, when that audition came in, it was like a paragraph. He's a robot, but we don't want him to sound too robotic. He has a personality. So I said, geez, I don't know. I just started kind of talking like this. And I would, instead of saying wasn't, I would. Uh, I would say was not. Um, I am, and so, 
and I think that's why I have sort of neck problems sometimes because uh, if I'm doing clank, clank correctly, my mm. neck is all over the place. Oh, Ratchet, we must sign Captain Core quickly. Oh, dear. Um, that just sort of happened. When I was a kid, I used to get in trouble in grade school mimicking people. I used to get sent oh, into right. the whole grade, uh, mimicking teachers, mimicking people, making funny faces. Um, I wasn't a bad kid. I was just I <laughs> overactive imagination. And uh, if you see these old uh, eight millimeter films, um, I'm always one. I'm coming in like this, like, a, you know, I go out. I'm always the idiot. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I would do all kinds of weird voices. I, 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 I would do that thing and stand in front of the mirror when I was a kid and make those weird faces and try and scare myself, you know, mm. uh, and make sounds. I really, <laughs> it was this old cartoon we did, Cleo the Misfit Unicorn, one of the earliest cartoons I did. And Mickey Rooney, the old Hollywood legend, uh, was was uh, the grandpa uh, unicorn. And there was a rap party in Vancouver at the time, and he was holding court. And we were all listening to Mickey Rooney you know, speak. And one of the things I'd never forget, he said, is, don't ever grow up. Don't ever grow up. And he's right. We have to have that childlike thing going on, which I'd mentioned that I, I think you know, Chloe Zhao has and anybody yeah. in the in industry and creative. Uh, I think it's all this childlike sort of thing we have to keep and cr- making noises with your instrument and, and sounds and voices is, is number one, it's a good way to entertain ourselves. Uh, yeah, <laughs> another, yeah another, there's that. <laughs> but it, it's, um, it's an instrument, you know, and, and, who hasn't picked up a, you know, a, a, a guitar or whatever to make, to see what it would do or a, or a trumpet or a, or a bassoon. I mean, it, it, this is what that, that is. And there's, there's a lot of range and, and, and it, people talk about range and um, usually people who get hired to do uh, cartoons and series have different, a lot of different range. So they can, yeah, they can do a character that's kind of heavy and big from New York, maybe from Brooklyn. And, but they can do some, you know, some guy from here. They can, you know, like, you know, kind of a cartoony thing, like a cat. I don't know. Um, or the regular voice. Uh, but the, your, your regular voice is the one that's going to get you hired. Oh, okay. You know, it, took, it took a long time for me to understand that. I was trying to be other people. Once you're mm. comfortable with, with yourself and who you are, it becomes a lot easier because we all try to, you know, we want to be other we, we, we mimic other things and be other people and then put ourselves out. But really what we need to find is who we are and what's what our soul and, and what our being is. And then, and that's where the realness comes from is your own voice. You know, we, we start there and then, and then go out. Uh, did I answer any question? <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, it was interesting. Like you, the, the point you brought there about like, it's your natural voice that gets you, in like the role yeah and, and don't forget kind of you know when you're re- here's another big thing when you're reading lines off a script mm. that's got to sound fresh every day like you and i don't know what we're going to say to each other from the one second to the next that's yeah. exactly how it should be with any character whatever, right. whatever scene it is we don't know what someone's going to say that's an important part of you know the acting profession is is being in the moment they say and, and listening because mm. Who knows what's coming next? But we got lines in front of us, so we have to make it so it doesn't sound like we know what's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had a great teacher of mine. Um, uh, did a workshop uh, with her. We did a movie trailer workshop and stuff, and like quite a quite a number of years ago. And then she had me go in the booth, and I was already I'm already a working professional. I'm thinking, okay, all right, I'll, I'll you know went in and I did my thing, and it's like, oh yeah, knocked out of the park. <laughs> And she, I got back in, you know, expecting, I don't know what I was expecting. Like, Oh, Oh, Mr. K. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're uh, not worthy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> what am I doing? Um, and then she she looked at me and she sort of did this and she went, you bore easily. And I went, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you're right. She says, you know, you do this every day, day in, day out. She says, here's, here's something that's really important. She said, every time you do this, it has to sound like you're doing it for the first time. Mm. If you're doing a character or a f- promo or a voice, it has to be sound like you're doing it for the first time. Um, and it's new every time. It's like you go to bed and you wake up in the morning, new day, all yeah. the time. She said, your job is to make this sound fresh and new every time 
you do it because you do it all the time. And I went, wow. And what, and how brilliant was that? And she, uh, she, she nailed me. She's like, you know, uh, and, and that was extreme. That when that whole uh, workshop, I kind of did it with a friend and I went like, what am I doing here? You know, but yeah, every, every penny I spent in that workshop, th that is the, what, what stayed with me. Yeah. And I, so obviously, again, you've done a vast a line of different characters all the years. Do you prefer, prefer performing as the hero or the villain? Well, I prefer, and it's going to be a boring answer. Any role they, they give me a chance to do, I will do. But but I will say, and of course, it depends on the writing, but um, I love heroes. I love the Batman heroes with the dark you know, mm -hmm. um, who, that, that side, um, it, but villains are always so much fun to play. And I think Alan Rickman taught us all about what a great villain is. A great villain doesn't have to scream and yell and carry on. Mm -hmm. A great villain could be very thoughtful. You know, what's he going to do? You know, and, and if, if a, an actor or a scene is played like that or underscored, like Vendel Savage is kind of the justice league if i ever find five or five you know he's he's seething there's a an old friend of mine uh from from britain he was a great shakespearean t a teacher a teacher of voice and yeah. uh he always used to use these phrases like skewering and stabbing and um you know when you skewer someone you it's like megatron skewering you know, this whole, yes, I'm skewering you slowly, you know, roasting you alive over. <laughs> but if you're constantly jabbing all the time and talking like that's kind of boring, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I love to play around in those those areas, whether good guy, whether he's a you know a hero, he's he's always sort of thinking. Um or whether he's a, uh, a, a true villain, uh, they all come from a, a place of, well, what I'm doing, I believe to be the correct way to do things, which is where a villain, you know, is, is most dangerous. He doesn't see the other side and he's doing what he believes. Yeah, he, he, well, he believes is right. And it's exactly, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, but yeah, that playing around in here and thinking and being, you know, um, that's more interesting than just shouting and, and being in a, you know, so the villains are always quite fun to do. No, yeah. That's cool. And so last question for me. Um, so obviously you've been to a lot of different conventions and all sorts of met tons of people. What's been your favorite moment with the fans? Oh, uh, there's been a bunch, but one of them was uh, during a Transformers convention. I can't remember where it was. It might have been. I don't know. Maybe, uh, Kansas or something. Um, or Arkansas. It was one of them. Uh, a mother was in the audience. They asked questions. We're all up on the on the panel, and a mother said, I "Just want to let you know, you all you so great, and uh, you you kept my son going. You know, we he had a serious. Uh, he was in hospital, a serious operation. I think he, I don't know. It, it was it was not good for the kid. Uh, yeah. He's much better now, but that she said, your 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 cartoon, the shows that, that kept him going. It kept him going. And Megatron or, or Optimus was one of his favorite characters, and and he and I." I thought, you know, I just thought we did like like weird voices. I have friends who are doctors and we have people these days on the front lines trying to save people's butts, you know, and and yeah. Uh and I'm in, in awe of those people. And I just thought, what am I doing? I'm doing like cartoons and funny voices. Well, it was moments like that where I, I brought him up on stage to sit with us, this kid. Yeah. And some kids, that's all they have. Other people have come to me and said, you know, I was in a bad state. I was uh one one poor um uh, a, a girl, um, you know, I think she was ready to off herself at some point in her life. It was a horrible home life. And this character, Trace Kushranada from, um, from the, uh, this series Gundam wing, she said, uh, she identified with him and it kept her strong and it kept her, kept her alive. And I like, Whoa, you know, yeah. and I, I've had fans write me letters, uh, and say, and so I no longer, um, I, 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 I'm very aware of how important it is we do we, telling telling stories and and um, and helps us kind of go away. Uh, what's that old that old play that movie Noises Off? You know that I, I, mm -hmm. I did a long time ago. It's that the director says, 
You know, I, I go, I come to the theater to to be taken out of myself and preferably not be put back in. Um, <laughs> and that's what we we you know. Uh, it's escapism, isn't it? It's, it's like why, it's yeah. yeah, really important. So. Yeah, we may not be saving the world, but we're providing, <laughs> you know, some relief from, especially these days. Or what's the, what a mess we're in. Uh, yeah, and and to be fair, like you brought it up really well on. Um, uh, I've got a butcher the surname, but uh, Jobby the Hon. Um, oh, yeah, when you did the collaboration, like his because you mentioned because he, he is an incredibly funny guy. Yeah, and um, I, I love that part of just you coming in saying, you know. Um, I love what you're doing, Jobby. You know, you you when there's crap around the world, you're making people laugh and all that kind of stuff. It, and it's true. Like it's all different levels, you know. It is. I seriously want to get together with him and build this. I think he's down <laughs> in uh, Long Beach somewhere, down, down a little further. But I, I do want to get together with him and build this this son of a gun. Uh, we'll, we'll maybe we'll, we'll sort that out in the new year. <laughs> yeah, I think he's, he might try and tempt you to try say a certain line. I know. Uh, you know. <laughs> Are gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Anyway, I know you need to go. So, look, yes, thank you, you so, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Um, I, I said, said this before we um, start recording. You know, I, I'm a massive Beast Wars fan, and I grew up in uh, Transformers Armada. I watch animated. You know, and I even oh, cool. watch like Ghost in the Shell and stuff like that. You know, all these like yeah. different series that you yeah. sprung up and you you brought all these characters to life and stuff. So you know, again, f- from a fan, thank you so much for doing what you do. You do oh, thank you, a man. fantastic job, and you. you know, keep keep going in that. And uh, yeah, so thank you all very much for watching. Um, all the links to David's social media will be down in the description box below. And also to David's YouTube channel, so you need to get on doing another uh, behind the, oh, <laughs> behind right. the mic. Oh, the pressure! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Another, Thank you another, so another thing for you. <laughs> no, uh, no. Again, thank you, and um, I hope you all look to subscribe to How to Game Differently and click on that notification bell so that YouTube can alert you that there's a brand new episode from How to Game Differently. And again, David, thank you so much. Really appreciate the time and. Thank you. I, I look forward to seeing more stuff from you in the future. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs>